I've just acquired this piece of property this past weekend. Um, met with the farmer not too long ago and gave me a map to the place, kind of showed me where the boundaries were and uh, showed me some of the secret spots on the farm where uh, some other deer have been taken throughout the years. Uh, we'll see if any of them pay off. Uh, right now I'm just excited to get out there, get my stand put up and uh, and also maybe get a trail camera put out and see what's actually on this place. Um, it's pretty hard to, to get a hold of hunting property anymore, especially just kind of knocking on doors or just through acquaintances. And, um, just feeling very fortunate to be able to, to get out and go hunt today. At Whitetail Zinc, we do all the work and don't hunt with outfitters or guides on huge pieces of managed property. We're do-it-yourselfers just like you. Some call us crazy, and honestly, we may be a little psycho. We document our hunts on camera, enjoying the outdoors as much as the kill. We have extremely high standards and only compete with ourselves. The only thing that makes us special is our level of dedication. Welcome to Whitetails Inc. This episode of Whitetails Inc. is brought to you by Wicked Tree Gear. Ozonics, scent elimination that works. White Knuckle Productions. Vortex Optics. Lone Wolf Tree Stands. Stick and Pick Trail Camera Mounting System. Tenzing Outdoors. Arborware. And Covert Trail Cameras. Awesome. This land has everything. It's got water, it's got crop, it's got timber, and I mean old, thick timber, and um, it, it also has a, a pretty good history from the farmer that says that uh, some decent deer have been shot off of here. from Iowa uh, from filming with Dan. I'm back in Missouri and it's almost four o'clock. Um, I'm on the north end of this property kind of hunting the east ridge. I'm supposed to have a straight north wind tomorrow. There's no real good way to get um, southern access to this property so I'm just going to kind of play this ridge and um, hope that it works out. It is November 13th. Oh, we got a little forky coming in here. Oh, he might, he might be a little bit more than that. Hold on. Oh, but he had quite possibly the worst genetics that I've ever seen. He, he had like this, uh, uh, either a six or eight point side, or well, four point or three point, and then a totally non-matching, like uh, just straight up forked horn. No main beam, no nothing else. Uh, I'm not sure if the deer lived uh, near Chernobyl or what, but it was 
the most goofiest rack I've ever seen. I hope that he makes it through this season and maybe even another one. I'd love to see just how jacked up that rack is going to be. Right. Man, he came right in. His, uh, his right side is, is all messed up, but uh, it's definitely a deer that uh, would take off of here and then hopefully a bigger one come and take his place next year. I think I may have a trail camera picture of that buck. You know, he's definitely not the biggest buck uh, that I would say is in this area. I'm kind of working under limited time constraints and, uh, you know, that's... That's just kind of the way it is, so uh, hopefully get some, some bigger deer in here this, uh, this upcoming season and uh, kind of go with it from there. I'm walking in here to go uh, get this buck out. I'm not going to have to go very far at all because he, he died right there at the base of my stand. Um, so. It'll be a rather uninteresting track job, but uh, I'm going to go pull them out now. There he is. And actually, it's probably the first buck that I've shot in, I guess, four years, because that's, that's about how long ago I started filming for Dan. Um, Looks like uh, he's probably a three-year-old, you know, um, getting up on him now. You know, maybe, uh, maybe he should have had a, another year, but, uh, you know, I'll, uh, I'll take what I can get. It's definitely more challenging to, to get out and, and, uh, and film and, and hunt uh, whenever you have a family at home. So, um, I'm, I'm thankful. You uh, have an opportunity at this guy here, and uh, now the the hard work's going to begin. All right. Well, I know I look pretty funny right now. Matter of fact, I look I look downright ridiculous. But I have found a really good use for uh, sterile gloves and uh, in and uh, surgery gowns that don't get used uh, during a surgery. A lot of times uh, we'll end up opening uh, more than what we need. We try not to, but that's just something that happens. So uh, me being the resourceful person that I am, I, uh, I get these and I use them during the hunting season.
this ozonics experiment and we're going to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that ozonics is the coolest thing in the world and it truly does work we have a food source the idea is the ozonics is running once deer come into the area then we're actually going to shut it off and we're going to see how long it takes for them for the ozone to clear out and see how long it takes for for them to react to it Once the Ozonics was turned off, and you could hear him blowing and carrying on, and he took off. That was approximately 15, 20 seconds after I turned it off. Where he was at is directly downwind from us when he was at the corn. That shows you right there that Ozonics works beyond a shadow of a doubt.